Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better act somebody. Hat on, hat on, suit on, looking like the top of dawn. Giving a microphone. Dress like a million bucks, but I'm things in its cup. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. And listen to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Uh-huh, I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You all listen to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Uh, got a radio show. Yep. Yep. Sometimes that's all I can say. <laughs> yep. Man. How far I've come is really unbelievable. But you know, I finally figured it out, man. God allowed uh, me to have the life I've had so that I can become experienced at so many different things. And in this experience, when I'm talking and sharing with people, I will be able to relate to a lot of different circumstances. Not exact, but just the circumstances, you know. You know, if a person comes to me and they say, man, I've been down and out. Okay, well, I know what that is. Man, I, I didn't I didn't have any direction. Okay, got that, been there. Man, at one point in time, man, I just kept piling mistake on top of mistake. Okay. So, you know, uh, I think what I'm trying to say to everybody is when you're going through life and life is dealing the cards that it deals, I want you to understand that life deals everybody these cards. The disappointment card, the setback card, the failure card the mishap card, the unexpected misery card. Everybody gonna get the grief card. Everybody gonna get the rash of bad decision card. Everybody gonna get them. Understand that going in, that everybody is gonna get these cards. Is how you play them though. You know, uh, from time to time, one more time, it's how you play them. Uh, you know, from time to time when I'm watching TV, I, I love to watch the uh, World Series of Poker. I like watching poker tournaments on TV. Because it, it's it's really weird, re, re, weird what's happened to a sport, to, to a poker. They're actually trying to call it a sport, you know. And it's the everyday guy that doesn't have to be athletically inclined to anything, who has a shot of winning a title if they play their cards right. The best poker players in the world don't have the best hands. They just make the best plays. I've seen guys win a hand with 9-2 in their hand. That's nothing. And win their hand because they knew the bluff. They knew the odds. They calculated risk. They made the stakes higher than the other person was willing to pay. They gave off the illusion that they had something when in actuality 
they had nothing. So what I what I enjoy about poker and watching it is that these people, these people here, play the hand they dealt. And it ain't always a good hand. But it ain't whether your hand is good. And it ain't whether you're going to get dealt bad cards or not because you're going to get dealt some bad cards. Everybody ain't finna get two bullets in their hand. You ain't finna get two aces when you get dealt, uh, you know, when you play a draw poker. Some of your cards going to be nothing, but you got to turn that nothing into something. So when you get dealt these cards in life, it ain't the fact that you getting keep getting them dealt. I was talking with a young person yesterday, and uh, we were talking. And we keep having the same conversation over and over and over. And they could not understand why they were not moving forward. But I said, you don't understand. Every time we talk, we have the exact same conversation. It is simply because you keep getting your cards and you playing them the same way. See, until you make a conscientious uh, conscious decision to do something different, the results will continue to be the same. See, here's, here's, here's the way this works. When you're dealt the disappointments in life, it's how you handle the disappointments that determine the outcome and who you are. Because everybody going to be disappointed. Everybody going to lose a loved one. Everybody going to make a bad decision. Everybody going to end wake up one morning and have done something they regretted. Everybody going to get caught at the wrong time. Every everybody going to make a mistake. It ain't just you. It is how you play your cards when they get dealt to you that determine who you are. Now, how do I play my cards better? First of all, it's a mindset. Quit looking at everything as just the end when it happens to you. Oh, Lord, woe is me. No, everybody got your circumstances somewhere. It ain't, oh, woe is me. It's, hold on, man, okay? Let me play this out to see how God done connected this to something else. See, as soon as a person have a setback, what's the first thing a lot of people do? They go straight negative. I can't seem to get a break. I can't seem to move forward. Hold on, man. Do you realize this could be connected to something? See, you got to understand, man, that this thing is all connected, that you're not having these mishaps and these spills and accidents and falls for no reason. It's so you can become experienced at them. So when he takes you to the next level, when it happens again, you have no how and how to handle it. If you keep throwing yourself off the cliff every time something happens, you're just going to be a cliff diver. Man, stop tripping yourself out. I was talking to this young person. I kept saying, and, and you know what they tried to tell me? I'm trying to stay positive, but the people around here, they just killing that. Oh, I see. So when you learn something and you know something, you don't take ownership of it. You allow other people to come into what you know and believe and shake it loose from you. I don't care who you are, you're not doing me like that. Here's the deal. I have a gift that was given to me from God. That is the gift of comedy. That's what I've done. I've made the bulk of my living on that skill set right there. There are comedians who are supposedly friends of mine who I've worked with who get around in huddles with one another and they say, man, Steve really ain't funny. I don't see what they be laughing at. He ain't funny to me. He wasn't the funniest king to me. Excuse me. You're irrelevant in this conversation because irregardless as to how you feel about me, there are people think that I'm knocked down, kill over funny. But more importantly, I own the gift that God gave to me. I take ownership of his blessing because you don't think it's so. You ain't taking that from me. Stop letting people steal your joy. Stop letting people take what you're supposed to know. Look, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a kind person at heart. Man, you ain't nothing. Now, you sitting here going, man, I guess I ain't. What, what you tripping for? You are a kind person. Own that. Take ownership of it. Stop letting... Things God has given you be taken away from others. The devil is a cold player, and he got cold players working for him, just shaking, just taking stuff from you. You know, I'm a hard worker. I really am intelligent. You stupid. Man, I thought I was a hard worker, man. They came in here and said I was stupid, man. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Uh, what? Excuse me. You're a very bright person. Hey, y'all, take ownership. When God gives you something, blesses you with a gift, a talent, a skill set, a mindset, own it. Don't let people come in here and take it from you, man. Okay, I probably shouldn't have went there.
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Let me know you're ready, Danny. Well, it's here, another day. The voice is raspy, but I'm still here. Ladies and gentlemen, the Steve Harvey Morning Show. I would say that I'm going to take it easy this morning, but I don't know how. So let's bring it, slang it, bang it. Steve Harvey Morning Show, Shirley Strawberry. (laughs) Happy Friday, Steve. Happy Friday. Yeah. Carla Pharrell. Hey, it's Friday. Never mad on a Friday. What's up, crew? What's up, Junior? Morning, Unc. Morning, everybody. Friday. (laughs) J. Anthony Brown. It is Friday. We put in a full week's work. It is yeah, Friday. Yeah, great, and great, we great. we off. I'm not finished, Steve. And we <laughs> off because we work so hard. <laughs> woo! Not yeah. the woo. Nephew Tommy. It. Don't worry. Blanging and banging, baby. It's Friday. <laughs> it is Friday, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jay, you must be exhausted. I, oh, Shirley, when I tell you, I'm looking forward to when we get off. Ooh. Oh, my God. I got four more to go than no more. Have Thank you, you ever heard Jesus. Anything more ridiculous? I'm gonna, this man works I'm gonna let it all. <laughs> I'm going to let it all hang out. Uh, you might even go to the I'm going to sleep. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to sleep. I'm going to sleep so good. Because <laughs> you exhausted. <laughs> NFL <laughs> honors, Steve. NFL yes, honors, man. Yeah. I, I, tomorrow, job, night, man. tomorrow night on CBS, tune in. Tune yeah. in and just. Because uh, you host. How was it, Steve, working without the audience? How was that? Man. That. Wow. <laughs> and you know what's really hard? A audience uh-huh. in a st- you got no audience in a stadium. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a stadium. No. Hey, dog. Yeah. Hey, dog. You can't feel more unsold yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Right>. I'm <laughs> unsold out. Every <laughs> people wow. everywhere you look is an empty ass chair. <laughs> dog. Maybe, they had know. they got twenty five people off to the side, uh-huh. but they were spread out so far. At <laughs> no point could I see all of them. And they masked though. And they in, in the end mess. zone. Hey, dog, you ever heard 25 people laugh in the end zone? No, <laughs> that's not. That's you not, know why not you ain't ever heard it? Because you can't hear them. <laughs> <laughs> I was out there, not man. Good, I was out there just laughing at my damn self. <laughs> Say, what am I, I doing? Oh, what I looked I like I had a good time. Uh, but, boy, we got, yeah. I don't know how much of that cussing they going to have to edit out of that thing. <laughs> Oh, yeah. When well, I let a few of them go tomorrow night good. on CBS. Yeah. Okay. So check I'm your sure local you pulled list. it off. Yeah. I'm sure you pulled it off. Yeah. I was so mad, man, because what I bought for it, and wasn't yeah. nobody mm-hmm. there to see it. Yeah. What? Blue cheese. Are we going to see man. What? Well, Blue okay. cheese. I told him. I said, I'm wearing this again because ain't nobody <laughs> seen this. <laughs> All right. Coming up in 32 minutes after the hour, get ready for the Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey, CLO, in the building right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for Ask the CLO, the Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey. Are you ready, sir? Yep. All right. Here we go. This one is from Michelle in Boston. She says, uh, Uncle Steve, I'm a recent uh, college graduate that is not interested in working a nine to five. And my parents are giving me grief about not using my degree. I've heard you say that your success is tied to your gift or something like that. And I don't want to be in a dead end job wasting my brain power. I want I want to travel the world and figure out what I'm passionate about. I don't need my parents money to do it. I've found a program to finance it all. How should I approach the subject with my parents so they won't disown me? Wow. Well, the problem is you needed their money to go to school. Now, it doesn't sound right if you say, I don't need y'all's money because I found a program. But when you probably needed their money and assistance to even get to college and complete it, I think nobody goes to college on their own completely. Very few people can do that. So don't go at your parents like that. 
but just do tell them that you have interest because whatever you got a degree in obviously is not what you're happy about because like I always say about college the biggest mistake we make with our children in college is we ask them to declare a degree while they 18 19 years old and they don't even know no who they are. a major mm-hmm. yeah man and you declare and you don't even know and then you get this degree because you have the power to stick to it and you're smart and you educate yourself and then you look up and you go okay I have a degree in something that I don't want to do and you don't want to get stuck in a dead end job and you only live once and I'm still a proponent of pursuing your dreams, but I think you got to get your parents on board with that because they're saying don't waste the college education. What they really mean is don't waste the money we paid for this college education. <laughs> <Yeah>. mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's a fair assessment. So mm-hmm. you got a little battle on your hands, but you got you to gotta talk to them. And then now you're old enough where you can just make the decision. They're not going to disown you, though. They're not. No, They're going to be a little so. disappointed. As we all get in our children's decisions once y'all's ass thanks you grown. Woo! <laughs> all right, thank you, Steve. Uh, CLO. Jerry in Georgia says, I've been married for seven years and my husband might be cheating on me. Monday evening after work, he got comfy and as usual, I went and picked his clothes up off the floor. His ring and watch were in his pants pocket, so I took them and hid them in my drawer. I waited till the following morning and I watched him panic when he couldn't find them. I gave them to him, accused him of cheating, and uh, he claims he's got a good excuse for taking them off, but he won't tell me because he said I won't believe him anyway. How can he shut me down like that? What's my next move? Well, I mean, you found his ring and watch in his pocket. What, what, how the hell is that cheating? I don't get this one. I, I don't really understand that. <laughs> you think he cheating because you found his ring and watch in his pocket. <laughs> now, you you watched him panic. I would panic too <laughs> if I can't find my watch in my ring. But when you give it to him and then you ask him for it, he had an excuse for taking it off. Well, well, you, you didn't want to hear that? Well, what would be yeah. an excuse for taking off your, your ring? I went to the gym. Itch. It was itching. I went to it the gym. Itching. I was washing <laughs> my hands at the job. Uh-huh. You know, it was COVID. You got to wash 20 seconds. I, I ain't want to mess up my watch. I took it off. All of mm. You know, that mm. right there. Any of that. Mm. You know, I'm sometimes, you know, it, you do get on. Yeah, shining it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe yeah. any of that. Working on okay. the car. You know, so yeah. those are good ones if you, don't, if you don't believe them, they're good. I was checking my good. prostate, and I had to take this damn ring off. Ain't no way I was going to be able to do yeah. with this damn ring on. So it is. All them did. But, 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 right but, but finding his <laughs> ring and watch in his pocket does not mean cheating. I don't know how you jumped all the way over to cheating. So what's her next move, to apologize? Why is it I a mean, move why? situation? To listen to his excuse. What? I mean, what, you didn't even want, let the man tell you what it was. <laughs> Damn, you're going to hear one of the down. ones we just gave you. <laughs> <laughs> one of those lies. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is from uh, Meg, an online listener. She said, I met a great guy and we hit it off instantly. On our first date, I invited him to dinner and I paid for everything since I invited mm-hmm. him. Our second date was at his mom's house for a seafood boil, and I was excited to meet his family. The third date, he cooked for me at his house. Fourth date, dinner at my house. He hasn't, he hasn't asked me on a real date yet or spent any real money on taking me out. Is this a red flag, or am I being shallow? Okay, hmm. hold up. Hold up, lady. You jumped out, invited this man to dinner, and paid for everything. Ain't, ain't nobody told you to do that? He didn't ask you to do it. The next time, he invites you to his parents' house for a a crab ball. Mm -hmm. Boom. The next time, y'all, whose house they go to after that? Uh, At his house. 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 Over to his house. Uh And then the next time, you had him back over your house. Right. Okay, what's wrong? Oh, yeah. they ought to be he full, ain't though. took they me on the real. Be- y'all eating your ass off. You just quit <laughs> going over lie. everybody's house. <laughs> Man, just tell him, hey, hey excuse family? me. The next time we eat, can we go out? 
I think it's a big step yeah. that he introduced you to his mama. Now I don't know how he introduced that's his that's mama date. early, yeah. but that's big. Yeah, it right. is. You ain't even looking at the good right. side. Right. Right. Yeah. You mad because he ain't take you nowhere and spent no money. Why did you do it? Yeah. See, yeah. here's the one thing about doing stuff. If you doing stuff, if you expect a man to treat you exactly the way you treat him, you are in for a huge disappointment in life. Yeah, that's true, Steve. Because that's we are true. two different species. Mm-hmm. You should have just did it because you wanted to date the man. Now he went, hey, come meet my mama. Why ain't nobody never done nothing like that for me? Then, hey, come on over my house. Let's go eat. And then you over here. Man. Oh, the second date? That's great. Yeah. Right. Man. All right, before we run out of time. Now, the problem think... is, what is you doing at all these houses? That's what we need to talk about. Eating? <laughs> okay. Let's just, you know. Okay. All right. Listen, coming up next, it is the nephew for Run That Prank Back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, Miss Anne is standing by with national news. and entertainment news, Nick Cannon has tested positive for COVID-19. Plus, in other entertainment news, some sad news, Princess White Dove has passed away. No. We're going to talk about all of these stories. What'd you Not say, Junior? Dove. What? Yeah, yeah. Not the when dove. doves cry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour. But right now, the nephew is here with Run That Prank Back. What you got, Neff? They move, Big Mama! That's so dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> they move, Big Mama! Not Big they Mama. Move the- Let's go, cat dog. It's cleaning service. I'm trying to... Can I speak to the owner of the company? This is he. Is this Robert? You, the owner is Robert. Is this Robert? Y- yes, sir, this is. This is Mr. Robert. How can I help you? My name is Carruthers. Y'all... Y'all clean... Y'all clean my... uh. My my house last week. Uh, okay. <laughs> and when y'all moved the furniture to clean the carpet, somebody somebody moved my grandmother off the coffee table. And she not in there no more. Hold, 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 hold on one second for me, sir. Do you know what, what day did we clean your house on, sir? Last Wednesday, y'all cleaned my you house. You said we came to your house on Wednesday of last week. What, what's your address, sir? Big Mama! Is, 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 okay, is Big Mama! Okay? Big Mama! Oh, sir? Hello? You said your name is Carruthers and we came to your house on Wednesday. If you don't mind, can I have your address, please? Yo! Big Mama! Big Mama! Oh, okay, Mr. Carruthers, listen. If 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 we if your grandmother now was your grandmother laying on the carpet? I mean, my guys don't move people, sir. Uh, we would not have moved my out grandma, my grandma. She was on the she was on the coffee table. Her her urn was on the coffee table. Oh, my okay. grandmother passed. Oh. Bethany laid. Oh. <laughs> Y'all and somebody moved her, and now the vase is still there, but. The ashes. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry. So you're saying that you're oh, big mama, big mama. Oh, oh, oh. Mr. Mr. Grubb, I am so sorry. Uh, listen, I, I just lost my grandmother not too long ago, sir. I, I know how you feel. I, now, 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 listen. My guys would not have knocked over a, a vase or something like that, or they would have told me if they uh, knocked over something. Are you sure that it was my cleaning service? Yeah, I ain't have. No, nobody had no two different carpet cleaning services to come by in the same week, man. Y'all the only ones came by there. Y'all the ones that did it. Y'all the ones moved my grandmama. And now my grandmama go. Mr. Carruthers. My grandmama go, man. Mr. Carruthers, I'm sorry about that, but if you would give me your address, I can confirm that that actually was my company that came by you. I apologize, sir. Uh, uh, so I'm sorry. Big mama. Oh, big mama. Big mama, girl. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. Now, if can you please just give me your address, sir? Let me let me pull some information up in my system, and we can we can straighten all this out. Uh, uh, hold on for one second, please. Baby, go and ask Wayne and Robert Jr. to come in here for a second. They had to be the ones to clean that man carpet on last week. Hold on a second. Somebody knocked over his grandma on her Now you. Big mama. <laughs> Now. Big Mama been there. She been on that coffee table for Church, ten years. She been on that coffee table for ten years. And now y'all, y'all Church. done nothing. 
Carruthers, I'm sorry. I'm I'm trying to find out if if, if you know what? Is, <laughs> when I get myself together, uh-huh. I'm gonna come down there and I'm gonna kick some <laughs> at that damn place of yours. You hear me, Mr. Carruthers? Now, now listen. I'm gonna do everything that I can to help you, but now don't don't uh. You're not going to threaten me on this phone. I'm going to you, you move my grandma, and I'm going I'm to move your now. You hear me? I'm a, I promise you, I'm going to tell everybody not to use this damn carpet cleaning service, because y'all don't okay. know what the hell no, y'all no, no, no. Hold, hold, hold the hell on. Now, li- listen. Now, now uh, it, it took me a long time to get my services together, sir. We do a real good job. Now, you're not going to threaten me. Y'all I'm move people's sure. grandma, but that's what y'all do. You move people's grandma. <laughs> we... Sir, we have never had this kind of incident. As a matter of fact, we haven't had any incidents at all. So Big mama. I'm, I'm going to do everything mama. that I can. I, I'm sorry about your grandmother, sir. I'm We're going to get everything I'm squared away from you. I'm going to get an ad in. in the newspaper and tell everybody not to use this damn service. I promise Look, you that. I done told you once. Now, you're not going to threaten me about my damn company no more. You understand me? I'm you're not going to put no ad in no newspaper, and you're not going to sit there and tell me what you're going to do. I done called my sons in here. I done called my nephew in here. They're the only ones that clean that god dog on carpet. Now, I'm going to find out what happened, but you're not going to threaten my company. You understand? This is how I make my living. Now, I don't know how you make your living, but this is how I make my living. You don't living. make your living, living by moving people's grandmamas, man. You move my grandmama. My grandmama ain't on the coffee table no more. Sir, sir, it's, I'm sorry that your grandma was not on your carpet table no more. Look, I'll try to find out what happened. We're going to get this fixed for you, but you got to work with me. Wait, 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 I'm coming down you. there right now to do damn office and start kicking some right. Have your boys there and have your yeah. there too. Now, you, you, oh, you're going to come down here. Come on, bring your Come on down here right now. I'm not scared of you, man. You look, I'm trying to help you, and you want to go off on me like that, bro? I don't give a Matter of fact, come on down here right now. You won't give me even your address. I don't even know where you are. I don't even know if we seen you. I promise you, I'm whooping your boys and your If y'all done move my grandma, you move my grandmother, man. Let me tell you bro. Mr. Carruthers, don't threaten me and don't threaten me about my boy. Now, that's my son. I don't take that too lightly. I will come personally to your house right now, beat your and then come back and clean your house for free. Do you understand me? Don't you threaten my children and don't you threaten me. Matter of fact, get off my damn phone. I got one more thing I want to tell you, man. What? Is you listening? What is it, man? This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your wife, dog. <laughs> Hello? Say, say, Hello? Say, man. Ethel. Ethel, don't. Um? I just. Don't worry about it. That, 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 wasn't, that wasn't nobody. That's just Tommy, man, you ain't right, dog. <laughs> You ain't right. You called me, Tommy. <laughs> now, you got my sons in the looking like, like nothing did, so I'm going to go bust them inside their head, man. You going to tell me what you going to do with my company, man. You know how long it's been since so I had my company started, man. You wrong for that, Tommy. Oh, God. You wrong, man. Hey, man, Robert, I got one more thing to ask you, man. What is? What is the baddest, and I'm talking about the baddest, radio show in the land? Steve Harvey morning show player, man. I listen to y'all every morning, man. Y'all every morning. Look here. Why don't you tell Dr. Steve, man, y'all need to put a carpet cleaning award over in the hoodie awards, man. The carpet, uh, we need a carpet cleaning. Uh, you mean a carpet cleaning in a category? Carpet cleaning category, man. Y'all need to go and put one in, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> Yeah, home run hitter. There you go. They move, Big Mama. Out the park. Out, out the park. Of the park. You play Tommy. too much, Alex. The Brand. talent Alex. is on this side of the show. We keep telling you that. Tell him, Jay. Tell him. I don't know why y'all tell be fighting us. Still in it? <laughs> we don't have an urn in, in our family. We don't have nobody that's, that's passing in an urn. Oh, no. A lot of black people no. don't do that. Urn. Yeah. A lot of them do. So I mean, do they think they're going to get up? It just That's makes why they cremate. Is that, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Just, it feels it's cheaper. Close. I just told That's you why. Oh, that's cheaper. That's right. Coming up at the top of the hour, entertainment and national news right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In today's entertainment news, according to People magazine, Nick Cannon has tested positive for COVID-19 and he will temporarily step down from his hosting duties of The Masked Singer, my favorite show. And uh, Niecy Nash will reportedly fill in as host. Wow. Get better, Nick. Yeah, yeah man. Good, better, yeah. Nick. Really good. Get well so we can do another drum wow. line. I mean, I'm wow. waiting on you. Get All better. about you, huh? <laughs> right, selfish. I'm hoping that he gets so well, selfish, Steve. I mean, Jay. it ain't about me. Right. I can't do it without him. You I'm said that, that first. That well. yeah. <laughs> What's the chances of Drumline 2 coming out after 30 years? 
They already had Drumline 2. You mean it Drumline 3? It did happen. Mm-hmm. They had a sequel. Flight of the Bumblebee. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Some sad Get news better, uh, out of Get Paisley better, Park. Um, Prince's White Dove Divinity uh, has passed away. The cause of death was a decline in her health and old age. Now, according to Paisley Park Estate, Divinity surpassed the lifespan of doves, and she was one of the last of Prince's OG white doves. She was 28 years hold old. Hold on, hold on, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is an actual really bird. Really, 28 real years? We're talking years? about a dove. Oh, this yes. ain't a person? Mm-hmm. We're talking what? about 28 doves. real years? No, we're talking about a, one of Prince's doves. When doves cry, Prince's dove, Divinity. You knew him? She's you gone. remember that Good in the dove. video? Huh? He had all those doves that flew. Don't y'all remember? Yeah. Purple yeah. Rain came out at 80 something. You trying to tell me that dove been around since then? The dove Man. is 28 years old. Yeah. I remember, we was just yeah, asking about this damn dove last week. I'm tore up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm tore up. I can't, I can't do you the rest of the show. You yourself, Steve. Uh, I, I, can't, <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't do the rest of this damn show. You need some <laughs> what? personal time. I'm going to need a week. <laughs> when, when is the memorial? What you say, Junior? <laughs> we were just talking about, me and Uncle Steve talking about the dub last week. The we dip. just brought it up. But she I think it would died, be disrespectful okay, to fly in a... for it, though. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's timing right there, baby. That's quick. <laughs> Come on, King. <laughs> That's quick. Do you, do you let other doves fly? And the doves, do uh-uh. the doves fly? And it's disrespectful, <laughs> Jay. It's disrespectful. Yeah. Well, how old is Mike Tyson's pigeons? Because we need to keep track of that. Right Look out, Mike. <laughs> well, they're still alive so far. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and do wow. pigeons and doves get along? Cause they about the same, ain't they? No, yeah, black they and white. That. You know it's that black no. and white thing. You know how that goes it's that black and white thing. No. Well, well, damn that. <laughs> Where's that Bubbles? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh. I think Bubbles passed away. Did Bubbles pass? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, I can't. No, I Did you see how he looked at me when Shirley, I said that? Shirley, Shirley, do you know you willing to kill anybody? <laughs> now you killing monkeys? <laughs> no. Sure. Sure. Devils, Bubbles Lord. has passed Surely away. We'll do it now. That's Shirley. <laughs> Bubbles is gone, Steve. Yes. <laughs> what? Bubbles, divinity. All right, uh, it's time for headlines. <laughs> That's the name of the dove. <laughs> Let's go. Divinity was the name of the dove. That oh. Right. <laughs> oh okay. divinity. I, I yeah, know. divinity. Yeah. Go go back and look at the video when doves cry. Divinity now. I, I can't watch it now. I just said that. Oh well. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, Steve, time for headlines. If you can do it, if you're okay. I really can't. <laughs> Somebody else introduce me. Somebody else. I'm not. Ladies and gentlemen, Jay, Come on, yeah, Jay. Do it for me. Come on, <laughs> Jay, Jay, go ahead, because I, I know you probably didn't get damn Ladies and done. gentlemen, I'm, I've got to toe up too, but I'm going to do my best. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ann Tripp. Okay, pass me the tissues, Tito. Anyway, good morning. This is Andrew with the news, everybody out there. The House of Representatives voted yesterday to remove controversial Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene from her committee assignments because of her history of trafficking racist, anti-Semitic, and baseless conspiracy theories. The Republicans took no action, so the Democrats took Taylor Greene off the important education and budget committees. Taylor Greene tried to plead her case before the vote was taken by claiming that, for instance, she no longer thinks that the Sandy Hook massacre and the World Trade Centers were staged. 9-11 absolutely happened. I remember that day crying all day long watching it on the news. Later in 2018, when I started finding misinformation, lies, things that were not true in these QAnon posts, I stopped believing it. But she even tried to play the victim later on, a victim of the media. Any source of information that is a mix of truth and a mix of lies is dangerous, no matter what it is saying, what party it is helping, Anything or any country it's about, it's dangerous. Well, now, uh, Taylor Green did not mention any specific network. However, the voting technology company Smartmagic, Smartmatic rather, has filed a $2.7 billion with a B dollar lawsuit against Fox News. Some of that network's hosts and Trump attorneys, Sidney Powell and Rudy Giuliani. Smartmatic claims that the group worked in concert to wage a disinformation campaign in the days after the election uh, that has jeopardized its very survival. Smartmatic's accusing Giuliani, Powell, and Fox hosts Lou Dobbs, Maria Bartiromo, and Gene 
Jean Pirro, Jeanine Pirro, of intentionally lying about Smartmatic, saying it wasn't uh, wasn't good, didn't work, and was doing all sorts of in an effort to mislead the public into the false belief that Donald Trump had actually won the election. Smartmatic is the second voting technology company to sue Powell and Giuliani, by the way. Meanwhile, SAG AFTRA, that's the union representing radio, TV, and movie actors had scheduled a disciplinary hearing yesterday for Donald Trump with the aim of revoking his membership for allegedly inciting last month's Capitol Hill riot. So Trump decided to quit first. The union issued a two-word response to his resignation. It was simply, thank you. Donald Trump's second impeachment trial starts next Tuesday, by the way. He's already turned down the House impeachment manager's request to provide some sworn testimony. In other words, show up and testify under oath. House prosecutors say that the written answers filed by the ex-president's legal team ahead of the trial denied factual allegations. So they wanted to talk to him, but he says he's not coming. As the Biden administration's vaccination effort picks up, city and states under increased pressure to ensure that doses of the vaccine being distributed fairly to those who need it most. And finally, this is Super Bowl weekend, the weekend when the whole nation runs out of chicken wings and recipes. Today we're going to do some oven roasted chicken wings. Good. We got some soy sauce. Mm, some smells salt. good. Don't yell, Man, by the way, just clap. Good. Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, time for you to enter Introduce Jay. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Jay Anthony Brown. I thought I'd do something different today and then write a song. And after the song, we might have a little discussion. It's a okay. kind of back in the day. See if you like it. Hit it, Dave. Hit it. Do you remember back in the day? When you went outside, if you wanted to play, you had to be back home before it got night. So you kept your eyes on the street light, grinding on the girl, the girl grind back, saying that you hit it, but you talking smack. You used to put your mouth on a window fan, eating fried bologna right out the pan. Yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, how we talk, no ride to school, you had to walk. Up in the morning eating frosted flakes, but you got no syrup for your pancakes. Clean the kitchen like mama said, or she gonna get your butt up out the bed. We used to hide the belt when we did wrong, but you still got a whipping when your daddy got home. You remember, don't act like you forgot. Hide and seek. We used to play for hours. Nobody had a toy. What? You unwrap your gifts. You open it up, it's a pack of pencils. Hot bread and butter. Come and get your supper. <laughs> you remember? Oh, my God. You remember? Don't act like you do. Uh, eating rice and gravy. A mayonnaise sandwich. Sometimes just a sandwich. Surf sandwich. Ketchup sandwich. Black and white TV. Or no TV. On punishment. Oh, you calling me a lie? Ah, uh, eating cereal and reading the box. Don't act like y'all don't remember. You remember a little football game you had to set up? It went like, eee, and it would spin around and then go no damn where. Kind of like the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Jay. That was fire. Yes, sir. Uh, home run, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yes. now, that was not for like millennials. You, you got to be uh, a baby boomer to remember all of that. If you're a baby boomer, you remember everything. Mm-hmm. Now, nothing. I remember a lot was all left that. out, but Ooh, yeah. all of that. I had to clean up the kitchen. That was my job. Yeah, you had to clean, and clean it up right. And clean up the kitchen means wash the dishes, dry oh. the dishes, put the dishes oh. up, you know, empty the trash, and sweep the flow. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. clean up the kitchen. And, and mop yeah. it. <laughs> and mop yeah. it. And mop, yeah, and mop. I do right. all mop the floor. And, and if yeah. you had a dishwasher, you oh, couldn't yeah. use it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and don't go yeah, to bed with the dishwasher was being lazy. Oh, yeah, she wake you up. Wake, wake your butt up. She pull them covers mm-hmm. back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 a surprise attack. And Saturday morning, we're going to clean this whole house. You hear me? I mean, top to bottom. I mean, Get them baseboards, baby. I, I want baseboard. them baseboards clean, clean when I come in here. Stove. Clean that stove. Get that SOS with pad some, out. With some old we underwear. We wanted to watch oh cartoons. This, yes. was, this was cruel punishment, man. With old underwear, you cleaning the house. All right, right thank you, Jay. <laughs> you took us As back. always. I just can't laugh yeah, this did. morning. Coming up at 30. The, that dove, man. Oh. <laughs> God Almighty! We'll, we'll talk about the big game coming up, Super Bowl Fifty Five, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Super Bowl Fifty Five is this Sunday. I'm sure you guys know that it's going to be at the Raymond James Stadium in Tampa Bay. Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. Tommy, who you got? 
<laughs> Tommy, who you got? Uh, I got to go with the young boy. I'm going with the K. Junior, who you got? Oh, Chief, huh? Jay, who you got? Oh, what are you talking about? Ask who you got. Uh, ask me. He old, I'm old. Old go with old. That's what I'm going with. Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Yeah. <laughs> going with Brady. Tom Brady. Tom Brady. I'm going to go with the Kansas City Chiefs, but I'm doing it reluctantly because I that? am so scared of going against that damn Tom Brady. Um, he can do yeah. it. Now. If anybody can man, do it, it's him. I think he got these boys in a mindset. But then, you know what? Kansas City, man, they young. They don't care about that. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. don't care, man. They go out there to ball. So uh-huh. if Tom Brady wins this, then is he Hang technically that the up. greatest of all time? Yeah, leave on top. Yes, yes. He check is out. The GOAT. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if he wins anyway. this, he is the GOAT. He's, He's the greatest there. quarterback so of all right time now. already. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're oh, saying it got that way. Yeah, yeah now, but I'm I saying if he wins this Super Bowl, that's right. it. Right. Yeah, that's it. That, and it's going to be hard to catch him. It's going to oh. be hard for Mahomes to catch him. Yeah. Okay. All right. You know, but Mahomes has. So he got to win to be great. If he don't win, he's not the greatest. He's still great. He's still he's great. Still no, great no, no, no. Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback mm-hmm. to ever play this game, period. Right okay. now. That's it. Mm-hmm. We all lose. Really. Really? Ten Super Bowls, Jay? Ten Super Bowls? He's been to ten Super Bowls. Wow. He won, won six, six or seven, six. Six, six. of them he won. Oh, wow. Man. What a record. Bad boy. Huh? Yeah, That's what a, a bad record. boy right yeah. there. <laughs> the official attendance figure says there will be 25,000 fans in the stands and another 30,000 cutouts. Also, out of the 25,000 fans in attendance, 7,500 of those will be vaccinated uh, health care workers. That's All right. cool. Oh. Yeah, they so that's really good. I, I like that. Yeah. That is good. But that's good. Did reward. you know they asked the cutouts to social distance so they're going to spread them out <laughs> so they won't? <laughs> no, we hadn't heard Cut that, out. Jay, but thank yeah. you. <laughs> Keeping your ear to the streets. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Shirley, what's the what's what's every year we talk about chicken wings? What's the story on chicken wings this year? Well, okay, so this is according to the National Chicken Council, Steve. They're saying we're going to devour a record this year of one point forty two billion chicken wings. That's billion with a B chicken wings. Mm. I believe it. Yeah, and they it's say people don't have to worry chickens? about the shortage. Yeah, they don't have to worry about the shortage of wings this year because chicken <laughs> production was steady during the pandemic and all of 2020. Mm-hmm. So you got where plenty these of chickens chicken. at, sure. Where are these billions of chickens at? Where, where are they? <laughs> no, you don't need in a billion. Your local I mean, we ain't past now a chicken going. You need <laughs> half a billion. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you need 500 wings. million chickens. Yeah. Uh, Each yeah, one of them yeah, have two wings. Mm-hmm. And if you and if you let Kentucky make the chickens, ain't you probably don't need but 180. <laughs> no, churches. If you let because churches it, make them, Steve, those are the biggest They just wings. have a wing growing yeah. out of every area you on their body. Stop. Huge, man. Yeah. You ain't lying. Churches got steroids on them chicken. Yeah, you got to get healthy mm-hmm. with a piece of chicken out of churches. Yeah. So how many are you guys going to consume? Are you still going to eat chicken wings? Can you eat chicken wings on your on your program, Steve? Well, Sunday's my cheat day. Mm-hmm. So okay. Sunday, I'll be able to have cheat meals. I have, You know, my trainer said the whole day is a cheat day. My nutritionist says one meal. I'm going to act like I ain't hear from her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got a plan. You're going yeah, for it. <laughs> I don't know what she talking about. How, how many wings can you yourself down in one sitting? How many? I really just like the flats. Me too. I love yeah. the flats. I really just like the yeah. flats, and I Those do about, about 18. 18 flats. What? Okay. Yeah. You can put that many down, Steve? Over the course of the game. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. All right, and don't forget to check out Steve Harvey hosting the NFL Honors tomorrow night, 9 a.m. That's what Central you need to do. CBS. Coming up, the nephew with the prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, why is your mama always drunk? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Probably because she drank a lot. Yeah, we'll get into that in a little while. Right now, the nephew is in the building with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Neff? This right here is Super Bowl party. 
Super Bowl party. Earlier this week, I did Super Bowl trip. This is Super Bowl party. All right? Let's go, cat dog. Take a listen. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach Gerard. Yeah, this is him. Who's calling? Hey, this is this is Curtis, man. I'm um, uh, I'm one of your neighbors in the neighborhood. I'm, I'm about three, I think about three streets over from you. Uh, I'm reaching out to you, man. I know the Super Bowl coming up. Are you uh, are you are you planning on throwing your your annual Super Bowl party this year? Man, how you get? You said you're in the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, I live in the neighborhood. I'm 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 three streets over from you. Oh, okay. Yeah, how'd you hear about the Super Bowl party, man? I, I mean, I mean, everybody knows about it. I mean, you know, it's it's it's, it's pretty big every year. You got you know, I mean, it's, it's it's cars everywhere. I mean, you guys be be rocking for uh, all through the night on Super Bowl night. So I, I'm I'm calling to see if are you are you throwing it this year? Um, yes, and you, I do it every year, man. I do it every year. All the neighbors come over, everybody comes over. We have a good time. So yeah, we're gonna be doing it again this year. Why? What's up? Okay, so here here what I want to tell you, man. Every year, your party too loud. And it's people parking all in front of other people's houses. You know, all, I'm three streets over. It's people parking in my driveway to get to your house. And to be honest with you, this shit is too loud. And I'm I'm just telling you this year, if that is loud this year, I'm calling the police this year. Man, this is what you really called me for? You really called uh, me to threaten me to tell me you're going to call the police to shut down my party, bro? Yeah, I mean, what, what kind of hate shit is that? Bro? Bro? Too loud, man. Man, everybody in the everybody in the neighborhood come to my party, man. No, so, ain't no everybody in the, the neighborhood problem? don't come because I damn sure so ain't been there. That's because you ain't get an invite. You damn right. You, 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 you damn right. Because you a hater. Because no you a hater. That's party. why you ain't get no invite. You Say a what? hater. That, I said you're I'm, a hater. That's why I'm you not. Get no, no I ain't no hater. I'm just telling you your stuff is out of control, man. man you got to tone it. You got to get control of your party. You don't have control man, of it, man. You telling me how to control my control your mouth start it let's start right there all right you ain't calling no police you ain't doing none of that we ain't doing oh yeah 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 whoa, whoa, hold on you ain't telling me what i'm not gonna do all right i just you the you. one you the, you the one throwing you. the loud ass party you the one got people parking in people's driveway and yeah that's right if it happens that's this right. year i'm calling the police you ain't calling nobody you ain't calling a oh. person i'm gonna tell you okay. that right now Okay, so, I'm so how you, you finna stop me? How you finna stop me from making sure I got peace at, at, on, on my street at my house? I'm gonna stop you with a size twelve right up your. Get okay, it. okay, all right. Hey, Come dude, I, it, I, I, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you again. Control your party. Get the noise level where it ain't, it ain't disturbing I'm, everybody in the neighborhood, and stop people from parking in people's driveway. And I'm gonna tell you again. I'm about to have a party with my size twelve right up in your. Okay. How about that? So, hey, dude, Come it, it, it is what it is, then. It is what Come it is. Get it. Look for the police to be at your party, all right? Uh-uh, Case no, closed. No, uh-uh. Case closed. Look for, the people to, look for the police to be at your damn party, because evidently you don't respect your neighbors is what it is. No, I, you know what? I do respect my neighbors, because all the neighbors in the neighborhood come except for you, because we already know you're on the, you're on that list. Yet I hate a <laughs> neighbor that be calling tow trucks and, you know, complaining about leaves so and people's yard and all of that. You don't even know I me. know you. I know exactly who you are. That's why you never got an invite to the party because you a hater. You do not even know me, dude. You, you have a no buster. really idea who I am. Use a buster. Use a hater. Okay. Hate I, 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 I'm that's the right. buster, but I'm gonna be the buster that's calling popos to be over there on Sunday. L- listen to you, 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 you snitch. Snitching. S n i t c h i n. That ain't. That ain't. That ain't that, that's not snitching. No, yes, it is. it's controlling yes, it is. the atmosphere and stopping it from being out of control. You the are out of control, out of control. especially. No, Let me not. ask you something. So, so you think people that's going to your party ought to be able to park in my driveway? Listen, man, I, I, I'm gonna be real with you. I'm sorry if anybody may have parked in your driveway, but it ain't nothing for you to just knock on the door and say, "Hey, excuse me, you know, I'm trying to get out." You know, whatever, whatever. I'll make sure I put it on the, on the flyers that. We don't want people blocking driveways, but, you know, obviously it happened, and I apologize for that, but that's no reason for you to be going all extra crazy and going the extra mile talking about, I'm calling the police. You ain't calling nobody, man. Shut up. That right there is what's wrong with black people today. Instead of coming to me like a man, you coming to me like a coward. Instead of coming to me like a man and saying, listen, man, I'm coming like you know, a coward. because the first thing you're talking about, oh, I'm going to call the police. And then when the police come and beat your black ass up, you're going to be on the other line complaining, talking about, oh, I don't know why they did this to me. You want to be suing and doing this and that. Don't you know that's how you get up, man? So as black people, 
We got to learn how to stick together and come together. If you want to come to the party, it sounds like you a silent hater on the low, for real. Like, you really want to come to the party, but because you're the only person in the neighborhood that hasn't been invited, now you're talking about calling the police. I know exactly who you are. Who am I? You that dude that live up two, three streets over, and you drive that, that red pickup truck with the flannel shirts and all of that. You're the only person in the hood driving a red pickup truck in flannel. What's wrong with you, man? That's why you ain't getting no invite. And on top of that, all those dogs you got running around in your backyard, you need to clean them up. They'd be back there and and everything. And then the other neighbors can't even have barbecues because your big rusty ass dogs running around. You got a nerve to be talking about you calling the police when we need to be calling the city on you. All that trash and you got in front of your house, man. Get out of here. I'm going to call the cops on you right now. If you ain't the wearing the flannel shirts and with the red pickup truck and the dogs running around with shit all in the front yard and the backyard and piss all over the place. Who the fuck are you then? Tell me. Say, say no more. I'm going to tell you who I am. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your just got pranked by your next door neighbor, Brian. That's who I am. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you know what? You know what? I, now I'm definitely gonna kick you in his <laughs> show. <laughs> man, you had me going, man. I hope when I run this prank, I hope the man with the red pickup truck and the and the, and the flannel shirt ain't listening to it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> all right, man. I got one uh, more thing. I, you got to tell me what's the baddest, and I mean the baddest radio show in the land. Man, you already know it's the Steve Harvey <laughs> Morning Show. Yes, sir. Way too good much. That's a good party, man. That was good. That's a yeah. good party. Yeah. He had a good mouthful good to say to you. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Get out of here with them raggedy dogs. Yeah. Those rusty ass dogs you got. You the one got that flannel shirt on, drive that red it truck. Really that one nobody want food with you. I sure hope the red truck man don't show up to the party. I really <laughs> hope he don't show up to the damn party. <laughs> Hope he wasn't listening. You're right. Yeah. Oh, boy. You talking about uh, me? That was good, Tommy. Really good. <laughs> Play too he wasn't much. scared, though. He was not scared. No, you ain't finna do nothing. Shut up. No, he Shut wasn't up. backing down at all. Was Tommy, not you having down. a Super Bowl party this year? I'm having a few fellas over. It will be social distance. Yeah. Okay, Dr. Fauci says, uh-uh. Super spreader. Hold on, hold on, Tommy, 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 Tommy. Oh, I'm, oh, that's right. My bad. I got ready to say, how y'all going to social distance at your house? But you don't live in the house. You live in the chateau. My bad. Oh, come on, God. man. Stop. No, you know. T- t- how, who, who, who you know can throw a house party at social distance in their house? <laughs> you? you got big ass you? house. <laughs> uh, I ain't you. having nobody over here but Junior. Y'all going to be social distance? Hell no, I'll be right up on him. I know Junior ain't got it. <laughs> look, look. How do you know that? Hey, man, me and Junior, me and Junior gonna hug and everything. What's up, Junior? <laughs> What's up, bro? <laughs> My man, half up and everything. Well, Junior been in his house in quarantine for real. <laughs> yeah, he ain't uh-uh. well. well, then we gonna be smoking cigars. Yeah. We'll have fun. <laughs> All right. I'm sure to say y'all go ahead. <laughs> For today's prank phone call. Be <laughs> safe, be safe. Coming up, Strawberry Letters subject, why is your mama always drunk? We'll get into it <laughs> right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. Buggle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the Strawberry Letter. Voted best subject, why is your mama always drunk? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the award goes to, all right, dear Stephen Shirley, I'm married to a man that can't control his mother. 
We've been married for two, year, for two years, and I've dealt with this since I met him. His mother went through a late-life crisis and has started shopping at Forever 21 and hanging out at cafes at night. I have warned her about COVID, but she says alcohol kills the virus. If that's the case, she won't need the vaccination because she is always a little tipsy when we see her. She's always got a Yeti cup full of wine with her, and she rambles on and repeats herself a lot. My husband and I live in a nice enough neighborhood, and there's an older man that lives with his daughter next door to us. He sits in the yard in the evenings, and my husband's mom has made it her business to get all in his business. She told us that he's single, and he just broke up with his girlfriend, so she's ready to make a move on him. I told her to leave that man alone. Two days later, I noticed her car was in our driveway, but I didn't see her. I went next door and looked in the front window window, and I saw her with the neighbor and it looked like they were having sex. I went and told my husband and uh, he wanted to go next door, but I told him not to. The next thing we know, there's a knock on the door from the man and he said that my husband's mom was passed out drunk in his living room. My husband was embarrassed, and he quickly went next door to get his mom. He still won't tell his mom to cut it out and act her age. Should I intervene and talk to her, or should I mind my business and let my husband handle it? Please advise. Um, Mm. I mean, what do you think you can do at this point? Your husband hasn't done anything. Uh, Let your husband handle it. He hasn't handled it. Uh, This is a grown woman who has a drinking problem. She drinks. That's why she's always drunk, right? You said yourself that uh, you have dealt with this for two years, two years, and that's how long you've been married to your husband. So you knew this was going on before you guys got married. I mean, you even warned her about COVID, but she had a clap back for that saying alcohol kills the virus. What? What, Mama? Uh, So right there, she's not trying to hear anything you have to say to her. Uh, And as far as your husband, her son, you see he can't control her. He can't say anything. He's not going to say anything. He might be afraid to say anything to his mom. Uh, You know how that is. Uh, She's definitely an embarrassment. I get that. But uh, you're going to have to let this play out because you guys can't do anything and she's already out of control. She's doing whatever she wants to do. And the last time I checked, passing out drunk over a man's house that you're trying to get with, that's not sexy and that doesn't get you in. So maybe you could tell her that. Maybe that'll help. But I don't think anything's going to help. She wants to drink and do whatever she wants to do. Hang out at cafes, did you say, at night. All right, Steve. Go ahead. Steve. Your turn. Well, I don't know. <laughs> You've been married to a man that you say can't control his mama. Who who can control a mama? Right. Mm. That's that's a tough one right there. Now, and you've been dealing with this since you met her. Now, here's the problem. His mother went through a life midlife crisis and has started shopping at Forever One. And hang out at cafes at night. Forever now, 21. Forever 21. Now, the reason, see, when you sh- when you old and you mm-hmm. shop at Forever 21, mm-hmm. you have to drink so you can <laughs> think you look good in that outfit. 21. <laughs> see, the reason they named the store Forever 21 mm-hmm. is so they can mm-hmm. attract the younger crowd. Yes. They didn't uh-huh. mean that if you put this on, you will always look like you 21. It's just an <laughs> advertising slogan. It's not a damn fact. <laughs> Matter of fact, when you put clothes on that you ain't got no business putting on, you look like a fool. This is how I know she old. So you warned her about it. She hang out at cafes at night. She said that you warned her about COVID, but she says alcohol kills the virus. Now, if that ain't an old-ass remedy, I don't know what it is. You got to be old to come up with that. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, so she don't need the vaccination. And then she's always high when you see her. She got it. Now, this is is when you really high. She ain't Mm -hmm. got a solo cup. She don't have a paper cup. Yeah. This old heifer got a Yeti cup full of liquor. <laughs> a Yeti cup. 
That one. means it can stay the same temperature for hours. <laughs> yeah. She a professional drinker. Mm-hmm. She got the same feeling the whole way through that damn Yeti cup. Yeah. <laughs> Even rappers ain't moved to Yeti cups yet. <laughs> She's an advanced alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> My husband and I, y'all, live in a nice neighborhood, and mm-hmm. there's an older man that lives uh, with his daughter next door to y'all. And he sits in the yard in the evenings, and my husband's mom has made it her business to get all up in his business. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you made that statement, but what you really didn't know was what she was really trying to get all up in. Ooh. And it wasn't mm-hmm. just his business. It was okay. his house. And then she told us he's single and broke up with his girlfriend, so she ready to make her move. And when we come back... I'll explain to you everything else that happened in this letter, too. All right, Steve. All right. We can't wait. Part two of Steve's response is coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Subject, it's our favorite. Why is your mama always drunk? (laughs) We'll get back into it (laughs) right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, come on. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject, why is your mama always drunk? Why? Well... This man's mama, you've been married to him for two years, and you done dealt with the drinking since you met him. His mother done went through a late-life crisis and then started shopping at Forever 21. You didn't say how old she was, but she's probably double that. So she should probably be shopping at Forever Senior Citizens. <laughs> but no, she's at Forever 21. Where is that store? <laughs> That's a new store I'm thinking about opening. Quit acting. Act your age, not your shoe size. Is what I'm going to call it. You know, uh, she don't care nothing about COVID because she drank enough. She said alcohol kills the virus. She's a professional drinker because we found out she don't have it in a solo cup. Mm-mm. It ain't in a styrofoam cup. Mm-mm. This woman carries her liquor around in a damn Yeti. She's Whoa. invested. <laughs> Yeti cups are expensive. She's invested in keeping yes. her alcohol at premium temperature. Yes. That's to be. That's an alcoholic. When you got to keep it right at the same damn temperature. Okay. She don't want it watered down. No, no, no. She don't want no ice in it or nothing. Keep that at thirty-three degrees. Yeah. <laughs> Now, there's a man next door that she done made it her business to get to know him because he done told her she broke up with his girlfriend. He broke up with a girlfriend, so now she going to make a move on it. You told her to leave that man alone. Mm-hmm. Who are you? Old people need love, too. Leave that man alone. Maybe that man don't want to be left alone. How would you like it when you get old, somebody tell you leave you alone? You just sitting over there by your damn self. Aww. See that? I think she was doing a Christian thing. Really? <laughs> Just you for think? now. Yeah. Just for now. Right. I know. We'll you. soon find out in a couple of lines that mm, mm-hmm. this wasn't real churchy after all. Mm-hmm. Two days later, you noticed her car was in y'all's driveway, but you didn't see her. Now, this is the part of the letter I want to focus on. Okay. I went next door and looked in the front window. What? <laughs> Wait a minute, lady. What, what your, your busy body ass? You so damn nosy. Mm-hmm. You went next door, walked up on this man's damn porch, and looked in their front window. Yes, Steve. Do you not know that's illegal? Peeping Tom is illegal. She said it was a nice neighborhood. Man, you can't do that. Who is she, the neighborhood watch? Uh. <laughs> All right, so now let me take you. Look. Then she said, mm. I looked in, saw her with the neighbor, and it looked like they were having sex. Let's wow. stop right here for a Right. Wow. What do you mean it looked like they were having sex? Number one way, Right. How you having sex and it don't look like it? <laughs> I'm, you know, I've had some sex. Uh-huh. Did it look Every like time it? I've had it, mm-hmm. it looked like I was having it. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's 
it just ain't no way. It ain't no way you can be performing and don't look like you performing. Sex is an activity. Mm-hmm. It's not a reading. Suggestion? <laughs> yeah, you ain't over there suggestion things. Each other. It's an activity. So you know good and hell well what you saw or you mm-hmm. lying, one of the two. It looked like they was having sex. Here you go. Now you got to be tired now because now you got to climb down off the porch <laughs> go all the way back across the driveway, go up the steps and tell your husband mm-hmm. and he wanted to go next door, but I told him not to. Why not? You been over there. She mm-hmm. over there. He over there. You been over there, but now the boy can't go over there. The boy. I told him not to. Next thing we know, there's a knock on the door from the man and he said that my husband's mom was passed out drunk in his mm-hmm. living room. No, which goes to prove right there they was having sex. And yeah. Old man, old man was in there putting in work. Old man was in there putting in hard work, uh-huh. and she didn't passed out. She was full. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he thought he had killed her. So that's why he came <laughs> over. Like... Yeah, this, this what? Was, he, tell me, he trying to stay out of jail. <laughs> he trying not to he catch think, a case. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I he mean, went how over. How did he say it? <laughs> Irma Jean. <laughs> Irma, Irma Jean. Irma Jean. Oh, Claudetta over here laying on his living room, and she done passed out because she drunk. He done left out the part of what he was doing to her because he don't know you was in the window watching it. So he right. just came and told you she drunk. Mm-hmm. He put her out. Yeah. Oh, okay. My husband was embarrassed, and he quick, quickly went next door to get his mom. Let me go ahead and get her drunk ass. <laughs> he still won't tell his mama to cut it out and act age. Should I intervene and talk? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Take your nose no. ass. You, no. look, you a nose ass woman. Go on, get in her business. You over there looking in windows, climbing up on porches, getting ladders, looking in and stuff. Got a telescope, dissecting sexual movements. Hell yeah, in a field. All right, see, we and gotta she go. she going to knock your ass yeah. out because yes, drunk people is. slap people real quick. <laughs> Post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey <laughs> FM on Instagram and Facebook. But coming up, Sports Talk with Junior right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, time now for Sports Talk with Junior. What you got, Junior? All right, Shirley, the countdown to Super Bowl 55 is this Sunday in Tampa Bay, Florida. Uh, mm-hmm. I saw this post on ESPN's IG page. This is just to tell you and look into the mind of Tom Brady. After the NFC Championship game, someone was crying in the Tampa Bay locker room, mm-hmm. and Tom Brady was like, what the F you crying for? We ain't done yet. <laughs> <laughs> we got a whole nother game. What you yeah. crying for? <laughs> you got to believe because he got six of them. He know when to cry. You ain't uh, seen me cry yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, we got, got more work to do. Mm-hmm. Yo, also, uh, trending sports fans are saying that Patrick Mahomes is to the Kansas City Chiefs what Michael Jordan was to the Chicago Bulls during the early days of his career. So oh, is that a true statement? You think that's too early to say yeah. that? You think it's true? I mean, how, how can it not be? Oh, okay. I, I mean, mean this dude is, he is right. He's the highest paid person in pro, pro sports. Yeah. What are you getting, a half a billion? Dog, it ain't, it ain't, I don't know no baseball player making that money. No. Nah. No, nah, ain't nobody making that type of money wow. in baseball. He got a half nah. a billion dollars? Wow. Yeah, you know. Jay. For 10 years. Well, how yeah. much money did the guy make who he throw the ball to? I mean, his salary should be <laughs> way up there, too. Huh? Nah. Nah, he ain't going to get that now. Nah, nah. nah. nah, we throw it to a lot of people. Hell no. Why we see he throws to a lot of people? <laughs> no. Yeah, he throw the ball right. to. Why yeah, we just throw it to somebody else, man. If you money. want a half a billion, we can throw it to somebody. Because somebody will catch his yeah. ball for two million. <laughs> yes, yeah. they will. Yes, they will, man. So, Sunday, man. I know everybody got the Chiefs except Jay going with the Bucks. Well, you didn't say it like that. I mean, well, that's what you're going for, Jay. I mean, you are. <laughs> you ain't listening to me. I'm, I'm going Steve with Brady. Hey, yeah, with hey, man, but let me tell you something, though. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going with the Chiefs because I like uh-huh. Patrick Mahomes. Mm-hmm. And I, I, like I like the Chiefs. Too. If uh-huh. I had to bet on what I think experience is going to do, 
I, it's, it's the Buccaneers, man. It's the yeah. Buccaneers. I, th- I think they have an overall better team, more better defensive players, oh, okay. and great, okay. they, you know. But I, I ain't got the dog do it. in the fight. He ain't gonna beat this young boy. Can do it. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, oh Brady oh, can oh, do it because they got a football team. Right. And what Brady is saying to them in that locker room is going to be effective. But Mahone talking to them, too, because they just won one. They ain't forgot. Yeah, and they, they ain't no chumps, champs. man. Oh, yeah. oh. Mm-hmm. And they defended. Mm-hmm. Well, they, you know, uh, right now, they're favored. You know, Chiefs is favored by three. So that's here how close it's going to be right there, Jay. It's gonna be really? It's supposed to be that tight? It's going to be that tight, okay. man. This is going to be a good game. I can't wait, though. Woo. All Jeez. right, send the it box. Box. Well, You heard it from Junior. Coming up at the top of the hour, Comedy Roulette coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, time now for Comedy Roulette. Jay, please explain quickly. It's very simple. You take three subjects, you put it on the wheel, spun the wheel, where it stop, because we mm-hmm. good at this, we'll make it funny. Put them up, Shirley. Spin it. Let me hear what you got. All right. Today's categories are things people believe will happen to you if you take the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Things people say who have been locked. Uh Uh-huh. Things people uh, say who have been locked up for a long time. Wow. And then things people say about the fight they lost. Things people say <laughs> about the fight they <laughs> lost. Okay. Mm, mm, <laughs> Those are the subjects. Let's spin the wheel, guys. Let's spin it. <laughs> Let's see what we got. Oh, it stopped on things people <laughs> say about the fight they lost. Yeah. Ooh, comedy roulette. I right. love it. Comedy go. roulette. Uh-huh, this things is good. people say. <laughs> but. Things people say about the fight they lost. She was a girl. What was I supposed to do, huh? Come Ooh. on. Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Things people say about the fight they lost. Hey, man, why you ain't help me? <laughs> hey, dog, you, you was fighting, not me. <laughs> Things okay. people say. Things people say about the fight that they lost. Uh... You know, if I wouldn't have been eating that Popeye's chicken, I wouldn't have had that seasoning in my eyes. And that's really why I lost it, that I got yeah. I had pepper in my eyes. I couldn't see. Really? Okay? I couldn't yeah. see. Good old Popeye. It's that, it's that three-piece. It's that three-piece. It was spicy, mm-hmm. not the mild. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. I'm doing things people say about the fight they lost. Oh, I was kicking his ass till he threw me over that garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're doing comedy roulette things people say about the fight they lost. All right, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Two out of three, two out of three. Let's do two out of three. All right, <laughs> you won the first one. Let's do two more. <laughs> fight again. <Yeah. laughs> things people say about the fight they lost. Hey, man, I had my good uh-huh. shoes on. I was sliding everywhere. I ain't had no balance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Good one, Junior. <laughs> Things people say about the fight they lost. Why you ain't tell me that was Sugar Ray Leonard's son? Why you ain't say that? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. You're supposed to say that, though, dog. Come on, man. Right. <laughs> Let I'm doing know. things Things people say about the fight they lost. Say, man, you keep bringing it up, I'm going to beat your ass. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Hey, man. Bring it up one more time, dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Things people say like about it. the I fight like they lost. Oh, man, I'm going to get another beating for all this blood all over my damn body. This is ridiculous, yeah. man. <laughs> 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 Things people say about the fight they lost. Listen, the quarters is nine of them. It's too many. I can't fight all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Steve. Oh, man. Things people say about the fight they lost. Man, you know you can't whoop ugly people. Ugly people ain't got nothing to lose. You know that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's all about they looks. All right, now, Steve, your look. turn. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, top ten well, things, people, things people say about the fight they lost. Oh, that ain't nothing, man. I've been hit way harder than that before. 
I didn't know you were Let's talking about. All. <laughs> all right. You Things people Come say. On. Anybody can jump in on this one. Things yeah. people say about the yeah. fight they right. lost. You got another one, Steve? That's- Things people say about one. this fight they lost. Man, you saw his kids there. I couldn't whoop his ass in front of his kids, man. I can't do that. That's why I took that ass. I just went on and took that ass whooping. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. That was Comedy Roulette. We'll have more of today's trending news stories and trending stories coming up at 20 minutes after the hour right after this. Hell, you fight him. <laughs> Hell, you fight him right there. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In trending divorce news, the Kim Kardashian and Kanye West divorce has reached the let me pick my stuff up, let me pack it up and leave Ooh, stage, okay? You didn't that's, got to that? That's how close they are right now. Yeah, that's how close wow. they are right now. First priority for Kanye, Kanye had 500 pair of Yeezys, of sneakers. An entire walk-in that's closet one was truck dedicated right there. to his Yeezys, okay? Mm-hmm. A whole closet walk in. A week ago, he returned. Hmm? Uh, seven How long years? did they stay married? Seven years, I think. Seven years? Oh. Wow. Seven years. Mm. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. What you got to say about that? A week that? ago, What's he returned to Los Angeles. Oh, no, no. That, yeah. I, any man that can Since do seven hats expert. off to him. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so he's a soldier. He's strong. Any oh, man, really? Any man can hang in there for seven years. Hats off or whatever that is on your head. It might be a hat. I don't know what it is, but hats off to you. I salute you, Kanye. How long were you married, You're a better Jay? man. How long were Which you married? Which time? Pick a marriage. Which time? Pick a marriage. Since How you're long asking you? so many questions. Which time, Yes, Jerry? what I'm Which saying. Time? Pick a marriage. The first I, time. I never double. I, I've never double figured, and I'm proud. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's been single digits on all of them, Jay. I'm Steve I should have asked Steve that question Steve about you anyway. Wait, look, look, yeah. look at the Zoom oh, camera. Three years uh, max. <laughs> Three years max. Oh, man. We got to talk about marriage. this some more. All right. We'll have, yeah, we'll have more of the no, Steve done. Harvey Morning we Show done. coming up at 33 done. minutes after, right we're after done. this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, time for you to introduce Jay. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Jay Anthony Brown. I thought I'd do something different today and then write a song. And after the song, we might have a little discussion. It's a kind okay. of back in the day. See if you like it. Hit it. Jay, hit it. When you went outside, if you wanted to play, you had to be back home before it got night. So you kept your eyes on the street light, grinding on the girl, the girl grind back, saying that you hit it, but you talking smack. You used to put your mouth on a window fan, eating fried bologna right out the pan. Yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, how we talk, no ride to school, you had to walk. Up in the morning eating frosted flakes, but you got no syrup for your pancakes. Clean the kitchen like mama said, or she gon' get your butt up out the bed. We used to hide the belt when we did wrong, but you still got a whipping when your daddy got home. You remember, don't act like you forgot. Hide and seek. We used to play for hours. Nobody had a toy. What? You unwrap your gifts. You open it up, it's a pack of pencils. Hot bread and butter. Come and get your supper. <laughs> you remember? Oh, my God. You remember? Don't act like you do. Uh, eating rice and gravy. A mayonnaise sandwich. Sometimes just a sandwich. Surf sandwich. Ketchup sandwich. Black and white TV. Or no TV. On punishment. Oh, you calling me a lie? Ah, uh, eating cereal and reading the box. Don't act like y'all don't remember. You remember a little football game you had to set up? It went like, and it would spin around and then go no damn well, kind of like the Cowboys. (laughs) (laughs) I love it, Jay. That was fire. Yes, sir. Home run, baby. (laughs) (laughs) That that was not for millennials. You got to be a a baby boomer to remember all of that. If you a baby boomer, you remember everything. Mm -hmm. Nothing. A lot was left out, but all of that. I had to clean up the kitchen. That was my job. Yeah, yeah, and clean it up right. And clean up the kitchen means wash the dishes, dry the dishes, put the dishes up, you know, empty the trash, and sweep the floor. 
Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. clean up the kitchen. And, and mop and, it. And, <laughs> and mop yeah. it. And mop, yeah, and mop. Do right. all mop the floor. And, and if yeah. you had a dishwasher, you oh, couldn't yeah. use it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and don't go yeah, to bed with the dishwasher was being lazy. Oh, yeah, she wake you up. Wake, wake your the, butt up. Pull them covers mm-hmm. back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do these attack. And Saturday morning, we're going to clean Jeez. this whole house. You hear me? I mean, top to bottom. I mean, Get them top. baseboards, baby. I, I'm t- baseboard. I want them baseboards clean, clean when I come in here. Clean that stove. Clean, get that SOS with pad some, out with some old we underwear. We wanted to watch cartoons. Oh this, yeah. was, this was cruel punishment, man. <laughs> with old underwear, you cleaning the house. All right, that. thank you, Jake. <laughs> you took us back. As always. <laughs> Coming up, it is our last break of the day of the week. It is. On this Friday. The last break of the day. <laughs> Coming up, closing <laughs> remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey at 49 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Here we are, last break of the day for this Friday. It's been a good day. Super Bowl weekend. Steve, your um, NFL Honors show is tomorrow night. Tomorrow 9, night. 8 Central on CBS. Mm-hmm. Gonna be pretty good. Nine eight seven. We'll be CBS. watching, yeah. boss. We'll be yeah. watching. We'll be watching. We will. And a yeah. shout out we'll to my. We'll see what you have on. Yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> tune in. You gotta uh, tell us what it is. <laughs> also, <laughs> no, no, no. Surprise! I'm really disappointed because I wore it for nothing. Wasn't nobody in that big ass stadium. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you wore it for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, mean, I hate to waste an outfit. I, I feel you on that. I hate out. to waste an outfit. I want to send uh-huh. a shout out to my grandson, uh, BJ. Uh, uh-huh. I call him Buddha. <gasps> BJ. He, he's got a great dad, man. Ben, ben is a great father. He's, he yeah. really invests time in that boy. But they uh-huh. sent me a video the other day, and he caught uh-huh. 10. He's four years old. He caught 10 football passes in the garage in a row. Whoa. A really proud moment for me, man. I ain't going to lie to you. Just, <laughs> Go, I mean, BJ. You know, he caught 10 in a row, and he was counting them because all he wanted to do was catch mm-hmm. three in a row, and then he said, give me four, and then he threw four, and then he kept counting, and he got to 10. And it's funny, he caught it's the 10th one and kind of threw it behind him, but we counted it as a 10, so... That was my yeah. great, that was, good moment. yeah, yeah. That was my proud right. grandfather moment. I done watched the video about yeah. seventy-five times, <laughs> at <Yeah>. least. <laughs> yeah. The Cowboys ain't caught ten That's passes. Really cool. He doing great. He <laughs> doing great. <laughs> yeah, future Cleveland Brown. <laughs> good job, proud grandpa. Well, that's Shirley. good. Congratulations, yes, Steve. <laughs> uh, be careful with your Browns comments, okay? What? A future Cleveland Brown? That wasn't a good comment? You didn't like that? What's wrong nah, with that? Tell nah, me. That's kind of how you said it, Shirley. You know. He think you put shade on it, Shirley. I said a future Shirley. Cleveland Brown. I did not. Yeah, that but she did. No. I, I, was, I knew what you yeah, said. So see, his daddy, his daddy is a Packer now. fan. And and he make BJ <laughs> wear Packer that. jerseys all the time. Yeah, that kind of make me oh, sick. I throw up okay. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-huh. It is, it's okay. his boy, so what can I say? You know, <laughs> it's yeah. a diamond football. I'm going to pack him. What kind of punk mess is this? Pack him. <laughs> well, this is the same grandson that his parents feed him vegan food, and when he comes to your house, you give him barbecue. So Barbecue and Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> you better be a granddad. <laughs> That's what grandparents are supposed to do. Spoil their baby. That's right. That's cool, Steve. That's good. That's yeah. Good deal, man. So, all right. So, NFL honors tomorrow night, and then you guys, the big game is Sunday, of course. Tampa Bay. Chicken wings. City. Chicken wings. I'm going to tell you something else I did to him, too. Uh, he was over one time, and I was eating a corned beef sandwich. And uh, uh-huh. I just go on. I let him bite into it. And boy, the uh-huh. joy that was on his face <laughs> from corned beef. I said, boy, one day, Papa going to take you to Cleveland to Slimin's Corned Beef on 40th of St. Clair. And I'm going to take you in there with your granddad. I'm going to let you eat the whole corned beef sandwich. Now, you're going to be sick as hell after that. <laughs> but it's going to be a But great it'll be moment. worth it. Oh, yes. <laughs> Parents are gonna be mad. <laughs> yeah. I tell you what I did one time. You know, I was doing a cleanse. You know, I had did the uh, uh-huh. D herbs cleanse. D herbs. Yeah. 
And I was feeling great losing weight. And to break it, we were in New York shooting something for my talk show. And it was the day I was breaking it. And I went to uh, the Carnegie Deli. And they're famous for corned beef. And I bought the, the super corned beef and took it to my room that night and ate a corned beef sandwich and then went to sleep. Boy, <laughs> the nightmares, right. the tossing, the turning. Right. I yeah. flipped myself all night long. I've never wow. done that. I ain't had corned beef since. You had heartburn. <laughs> you had heartburn. Heartburn, stomach burn, acid <laughs> reflux, lactose. I, everything happened lactose. to me. Lactose? Yeah. Milk? Yeah, I think it was some milk in the bread. <laughs> Some cheese on it, something like that. <laughs> oh God, man! Wow. Have you have you ever ate something that was so enjoyable, but you ended up regretting it? More, yeah, sure. Yeah. More yeah. ice cream. Yeah, ice like, cream deals yeah, for me, man. I know I'm not supposed to have banana it. Banana pudding. Not have none of that. I be you know, man. Uh, I found out that I can't have dairy anymore. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just against my system. Dairy? It always has. Yeah, I can't have any dairy, cream, nothing. And I've noticed, man, I've become, you can, I see a lot more veins in my hands and feet and stuff because the inflammation has gone down tremendously because of that, right? And so I found this woman in Atlanta that makes uh, a non-dairy ice cream. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. It good. is good. absolutely good, delicious. What, what absolutely is, what's in it? delicious. Give me her number. What's in it? You have I, mean, what's, I don't know. What's, what, uh, it ain't no dairy. Oh. <laughs> and I can eat it with no effects, and I don't feel bloated, and it's delicious. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, oh man, they have all flavor. Oh, it's delicious. Mm. Oh. You won't know that you're not that you're not eating non-dairy then, ice cream. Okay, then I, yeah, because that I, I love need to taste ice this. cream. <laughs> so, but sure. I can't go I'm, I'm gonna give you her so number. Much. She's in Atlanta. Please. Okay, you know how much I ooh, love ice cream. <laughs> Can't have none of that on this program I'm on, though, boy. I got 30 days. Uh, got to get it up. Because Monday, m- well, Sunday's my cheat day, but Monday is my yeah. fast day. So, got to get it all in because oh. I got oh, fast, So, you're going to be in the mood on Monday morning at work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be foul. After yeah. Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. See y'all Monday right after Super Bowl. <laughs> For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 